Hello from COP26 here in Glasgow. I'm very happy to be joined by the EIB's adaptation expert, Cinzia Loseno. Uh, Cinzia, the EIB is presenting its new adaptation plan here at COP. But before we talk about that, tell me, why does it matter? Adaptation is a big word here this year. Thanks, Sharina. Adaptation matters um, because of the increasing frequency and intensity of extreme events, things like extreme heat, heat waves, uh, rise in sea level, floods and droughts. And these events are becoming more and more serious and more severe and affecting all corners of the world. The science is clear about it. We know that even if uh, we um, in decrease emissions of greenhouse gases to a very low level, there will be unavoidable effects unavoidable impacts and we need to adjust and reduce the effects of those impacts. And would you say that to, to date the emphasis has been much more on those mitigation projects, so yes. reducing uh, energy of emissions? Of course, and here in Glasgow this is a key theme. It's absolutely crucial that countries commit to uh, increased reductions of greenhouse gas emissions. But the science tells us that there will be unavoidable effects even if we reduce those emissions to well below 1.5 degree. So there will be a need to um, set up systems and become more prepared to those effects. I mean, we've seen this summer in, in southern Europe, but it, but also developing countries are so much on the front line, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, but what we are learning is that there is no safe haven. Um, even Europe is vulnerable, and we learned this lesson in a very tragic way over the events uh, in the summer. Um, but of course, developing countries are the most uh, uh, vulnerable and the hardest hit by the negative effects of climate change for a number of reasons, because of the geographical location, uh, because of their infrastructure and their socioeconomic systems. Um, and therefore, adaptation is a key theme for development. Um, we just uh, uh, launched our new development branch and adaptation will be a key theme in the context of, we, of the work that we will be doing in the development world. So here at COP, the European Investment Bank is not the only one to be uh, making commitments about doing more for adaptation. In the EIB context, what does that actually mean, that, that greater commitment? Well, first of all, it means an increased ambition. We want to invest more in adaptation, covering a, a variety of sectors. We have identified some key areas where we really want to scale up our support from capital intense investments like flood protection and coastal management to protecting cities, energy and transport and health infrastructure to um, developing new solutions through the work that we do with the private sector, for example, developing technologies that can help us, for example, reduce the use of water or anticipate extreme events and uh, do research in new crops. So it's a fascinating area, it's a growing market, a new market, it's one where the EIB can play a key role. So first of all, ambition. The second element of, uh, of the plan of, that we are about to launch is to do with uh, becoming smarter about ad adaptation. It's to do with using good, robust data about the future, about how climate may change in the future, and use that information to do better projects, but also to help our clients access that data. This is absolutely crucial. Uh, you cannot adapt if you don't know what the risk exactly. might be. Exactly, it's not just about the money, it's also about advising and supporting exactly. through a new platform, right? There's a new platform. Yes, we are uh, in the process of launching a new advisory service it's called ADAPT. That will be initially for EU countries and it's meant to support clients across all spectrums of, uh, of services from uh, uh, the developmental strategies and plan to adapt down to uh, new projects, project development and preparation. And we intend to uh, work with both public and private sector actors and help them uh, develop those strategies and put them in practice through real operations on the ground. Two of the very important partners, of course, are the Global Adaptation Centre and the African Development Bank. And I believe um, we foresee a tripling of investment in adaptation. But, I mean, one of the challenges surely is that it is much more attractive for the private sector to invest in, um, say, a new wind farm or a fascinating 
uh, promising new technology than necessarily a flood relief program. I mean, how do you make these attractive projects for private investors? They say where we're going to get a return, a bankable project. Of course, this is quite a difficult question, uh, but the, the private sector, in fact, can play a key role because of their potential for research, development and technological transformation. We need them, we need to work with them to really enable that transformation. Um, and then there is another aspect that is the fact that uh, private sector operations are also affected by climate change. So our private sector clients need to adapt themselves to make sure that the services they provide are resilient. Yes. So again, the EIB can uh, support private sector um, clients in doing both things, developing new technologies, but also becoming more prepared for a changing climate. Action, that's right. And I guess the the cost of inaction it's is too, too high. It's too high, Shirin. We cannot afford it. We need to act now. And uh, adaptation is an absolutely crucial team at COP26. Um, we will do our best to um, you know, meet the demand and the call of multilateral development banks to do more. We are trebling our adaptation finance. We will hope to, of course, have a higher impact in the operations that we finance. Um, so we're ready. We're ready to go. Strong commitments <laughs> there. Thank you very much, Cinzia Lozeno. That's all from me now. Bye for now.